Hi, my name is Fwambaisia Amadou. I'm a Sierra Leonean American anthropologist and founder of Sia Inc. We do a variety of things at Sia Inc., but our main focus is empowering circumcised women and girls in sub saharan Africa to stand up for our rights to equality, dignity, and self-determination. These are big human rights concepts that I will cover in detail in future blogs, videos, and interviews. Today, I am speaking in my capacity as the official global spokeswoman or the PRO for the National Sui Council of Sierra Leone, which is made up of the female traditional heads and circumcision practitioners of Bundo and Sunday Women's Secret Sodalities or Secret Societies. My organization was responsible for bringing together over 3,000 Suez and Bundo women leaders last year to the National Stadium in Freetown in a historic occasion to celebrate our traditions and establish a blueprint for moving forward. To this end, I want to speak specifically in reference to a BBC interview yesterday that featured the First Lady of Sierra Leone, Madame Fatima Marabio, and social media personality Vicky Rameau. Madame Fatima Bio was questioned about her refusal to support anti-FGM campaigns in Sierra Leone. The First Lady stated categorically that she is a circumcised woman and has never experienced any health complications. She also indicated that although she has heard of excessive bleeding in some cases, she has never been presented with any actual evidence of harmful consequences of the type of female circumcision performed in Sierra Leone. She emphasized that she is supportive of current government efforts to encourage practitioners not to circumcise girls under the age of 18. She noted, however, that she is not the government of Sierra Leone and therefore cannot herself implement a ban on under 18 circumcision. The First Lady also added that she has young daughters who are not circumcised. Ms. Rameau was asked to respond to the First Lady's comments. And this is where I am going to come in. Ms. Rameau was correct about certain points she made, but I want to clarify those areas where, as a non-Bundo Sande member who is not an expert on these traditions, she made misleading statements about female circumcision, women's knowledge, and the gender ideology of Bundo and Sande societies. First, Ms. Rimo is correct for recognizing that Bundo and Sande societies are the epitome of feminine power in Sierra Leone. She also noted that Bundo and Sande are sacred and exclusive spaces for women. More accurately, Bundo represents the embodiment of women's control over male sexual pleasure and reproductive power from ancestral times to the present. Together, with the male counterpart, Poro Society, these two traditional institutions are responsible for the construction of gender, the creation of female and male, of wife and husband, and separation of mother and son, which forms the basis of our gendered kinship systems or social structures in Sierra Leone. My website contains a wealth of, inf- of literature on the complementarity and interdependence of female and male initiation within Bondo and Poro in Sierra Leone. Now to speak to some of the one-sided issues Ms. Rameau referred to, secrecy. Yes, initiation into Bondo and Sande involves secrecy and a code of honor for women. This is also the case for male initiation into Poro. In fact, no one ever dares to speak openly or publicly about Poro society and what goes on in the Poro bush. Where I'm from, in Kono, it is this, it's called the Sumwe society. Only African women's spaces and bodies have been breached by Western-financed FGM campaigns. Ms. Rameau refers to the practice of female circumcision as generally performed on children. In Sierra Leone, several major ethnic groups only initiated girls in the past at older adolescents. This was the case because initiation involves the transformation of girls into wives, just as male initiation transforms boys into husbands, and therefore they had to be physically ready for marriage, which of course means engaging in sexual relations and bearing children. 
The circumcision of girls at very young ages became more common as a result of Islamization, colonialization, and the requirements of modern schooling, and now because of aggressive anti-FGM campaigns. Like the First Lady has said, campaigners should focus on working with women leaders and traditional authorities to increase the age of female initiation nationally, and any female circumcision procedure that involves more than the removal of clitoral foreskin, which is comparable with removal of penis foreskin in male circumcision. Ms. Rameau then makes a reference to the 2007 Child Rights Act and states that legislators refused to include a provision banning under 18 female circumcision because it was election year. She is correct about this, and I will come back to this in a moment. For now, I want to address Ms. Rameau's casual reference to harmful consequences of female circumcision. As the First Lady stated, she herself has not experienced any long-term harm from her procedure. She has heard of other women who said they were harmed, but she has not seen any medical evidence to support a move on her part to champion FGM campaigns. And this is the problem with anti-FGM campaigns. For 50 plus years, there has been a lot of sensationalized media attention, pictures of dirty knives and razor blades, babies or grown women being held down, and a lot of outlandish horror stories recounted by asylum seekers in Western countries. However, all the reliable scientific evidence that we are aware of continues to confirm that there is no significant difference in the experiences of circumcised and uncircumcised women living in the same environment with the same access or lack of access to adequate health care when it comes to sexual and reproductive health outcomes. As I have pointed out on several occasions in response to Ms. Ramos' call to protect girls from genital cutting of so-called healthy organs, the same criticism can be and is leveled against male circumcision. Ms. Ramo had no issue blogging arrogantly about her parental prerogative to remove so-called healthy tissue from her newborn son when he was clearly unable to give informed consent. In that blog, Ms. Ramo confuses parental consent for informed consent. The fact is that she, Vicky Ramo, chose to remove what male circumcision opponents believe is healthy, erogenous flesh and tissue from her infant son simply because of her own beliefs about the long-term benefits versus the short-term risks. Well, millions of Sierra Leonean women make the same decisions about their daughters in Sierra Leone. Ms. Rameau may have had the luxury of having her son cut in a hospital in the United States under local anesthesia, but the vast majority of boys are cut in the bush in Sierra Leone with no anesthesia and with the same traditional methods, knives, and razors used in female circumcision. Ms. Rameau also patronizingly suggested that most women in Sierra Leone have never seen uncut, normal, healthy female genitalia. How many uncircumcised women have seen normal, healthy, circumcised female genitalia? Ms. Rameau assumed that the women of Sierra Leone do not understand the use and function of the organ that is removed. Well, to Ms. Rameau and all others who make this assumption, Bondo and Sande women know exactly what is removed. We celebrate what is removed and are deliberate about the benefits of this excision. Bondo women are very clear about the health, hygiene, and aesthetic advantages of being circumcised prevention of clitoral and labia hypertrophy or uncomfortable and unsightly overgrowth of the visible external foreskin and glands and inner labia. These problems are the main reason given for the explosion of female genital cosmetic procedures among uncircumcised, mainly white women in Western countries. These procedures involve labia and clitoral reductions as well as vaginal tightening. Prevention of painful clitoral adhesions caused by poor hygiene and buildup of smegma. Smegma is the cheese-like substance that develops between the clitoral foreskin and glands. The prevention of smegma is one of the main reasons given by women like Ms. Rameau and men to justify male circumcision. 
Prevention of odorous bacteria and importantly, viral infections such as HPV that can grow in the moist environment of the clitoral foreskin and glands and cause, for instance, throat cancer in partners who engage in oral sex. Again, another justification for male circumcision is to reduce the transmission of HPV, which can cause cervical cancer in women as well as the spread of the deadly HIV virus. Aesthetics. Most circumcised women and our partners prefer the smoother, symmetrical, and cleaner appearance of a circumcised vulva in the same way that most circumcised men and their partners prefer the smoother and cleaner appearance of the circumcised penis. Circumcision, male and female, in Sierra Leone is performed for cultural and religious reasons, and not specifically to achieve the benefits I just stated, but the perceived health and aesthetic advantages are certainly real and impactful for affected men and women. So back to the political importance of female circumcision and why it is that legislators will never enact a law that goes against the will of the majority of women in Sierra Leone. Female and male circumcision are central to the identities of individuals and to the social structures of almost all ethnic groups in Sierra Leone. Our traditional authorities who are represented in Parliament would never vote against their ancestral traditions that continue to give cultural meaning as well as real health, hygiene, and aesthetic benefits to women. Our male and female paramount chiefs and heads of male and female societies are the custodians of these traditions, and they will ensure that these traditions are preserved. We welcome any challenge by anti-FGM activists or Ms. Rimo herself to the democratic rights of women in our 2023 national elections. We agree that the narrative must change in Sierra Leone, in the rest of Africa, and throughout the world, in fact. The Western feminist narrative of FGM, in our view, is racist and sexist and represents an attempt by mainly white Western women and feminists to colonize the bodies and minds of circumcised women. Many of these same Western women in the U.S. are fighting to defend Roe versus Wade and their right to choose what to do with their own bodies, even killing their unborn children. Yet they want to deny African, and Muslim women the same right to choose what to do with our own bodies and to circumcise our daughters in our own likeness? We have our own narratives, our own gender constructs, our cultures, traditions, and religious practices. The women of Sierra Leone have every right to equality, to dignity, and to self-determination that is accorded to men and women like Ms. Rameau, who practice neonatal male circumcision and to Western women and their daughters who are now increasingly adopting and modernizing our female circumcision practices in female genital cosmetic surgery procedures. For more information on how interested individuals can work with the SOE Council in Sierra Leone, or Sierra Leone Women Are Free to Choose, or SIA Inc., in our efforts to medicalize and improve traditional female circumcision, as well as to advance adult literacy among current practitioners and formal medical and research training to the young Soways of the future, do contact us. You can reach me personally at www.fwambaisiaamadu.com or www.siamagazine.com or www.awafc.com Dot org. You can also reach us on Instagram or Facebook, see a magazine, look us up. We're looking forward to hearing from any and all of you listeners out there. Thank you.